Make money love you. Have a healthy relationship with money. There's no getting away from it. Money is an essential and necessary part of life. Whilst there are more important things in life, like love, happiness, health and spiritual development, our well-being is deeply connected with our financial health. Money provides opportunity. Not having money brings stress and few opportunities in life. It means we have to say no to opportunities when we want to say yes. Not having money impacts our well-being. Having lots of money opens doors and choices to us. Here are ways to have a healthy relationship with money. Don't try too hard. Have you ever found yourself clenching your fists and chanting, I want to be rich, I want to be rich, money, 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 I want money, saying it over and over again in a mad frenzy of desire. Doing this just reeks of desperation. It is like trying to force yourself to sleep at night if you have insomnia by saying, I want sleep, I want sleep, sleep now. The sleep just won't come. However, if you can relax, do some deep breathing, listen to a relaxing podcast and not think or worry at all about falling asleep, then eventually you will start to relax and sleep will slowly creep up on you until you feel drowsy and you nod off. Money is the same way. If you desire it too much, it will stay away from you. You have to have a relaxed, healthy and inviting approach towards money. By desiring money in a stalker-like way, you create too much inner tension. This tension blocks the flow of energy. Think of money like the flow of water in a spring. When the spring flows naturally, the water stays clear and gives life. But when it is blocked or stagnates, it smells and nothing lives in it. Our relationship to money must be free, relaxed and without tension. Then it can flow to us just like spring water. By desiring money in a stalker-like way, you create too much inner tension. This tension blocks the flow of energy. The Inner Scrooge The character of Scrooge from Charles Dickens' book, A Christmas Carol, is an example of someone who has a relationship of tension with money. Though he was rich and successful, his miserly attitude makes him miserable and lonely. Scrooge grasped onto his money in a tense and unhealthy way. He refused to see that money is like energy. It needs to flow. It should enrich our lives and our relationships with others. It should not trap us into misery. On the other hand, there are some things we can learn from Scrooge. Apart from his general meanness and risk of eternal damnation, he was actually a very successful businessman. He lived and breathed money. Scrooge's money balance was wrong. He was too miserly and so he had to go into the complete opposite direction by becoming manically generous in the end of the story in order to balance the forces. What was good about Scrooge was that he respected money. He worshipped it. Every penny was important and he hated to spend anything frivolously. From Scrooge, we can learn that we do need to respect money. We mustn't hate it or fear it or see it as a cause of evil. We need to respect it because only money can do what money can do in life. It has a function. Respect but don't desire. Whilst we should respect money, we should avoid desiring it. You have to encourage it to come, but not force it to come. You have to open yourself up to it in order to attract it. How do we do it? Here is a simple tip. If you see a coin on the floor, pick it up and put it in your wallet. But before you do, give thanks to the God of money. That is right. Imagine there is a God of money. 
In Japan, there are two main religions, Buddhism and Shintoism. They respect ceremonies from both religions as part of life. There is no, I'm a Buddhist so therefore I can't go to a Shinto shrine, the same way a Christian won't go to a mosque and vice versa. The Japanese are dualistic and pragmatic. They will incorporate different things from other cultures if it improves their life. For example, they incorporated Western scientific medicine along their traditional medicine like acupuncture, shiatsu and kampo, herbal medicine. They incorporated Western military practices into their army, yet kept the spirit of Bushido, the way of the warrior. By doing so, they get the best of both worlds. In Shintoism, they respect many gods, and many of these gods are related to nature. We have to consider that Japan is a country that sits on the cusp of many tectonic plates. Mount Fuji is an active volcano. The Japanese are moments away from a mega tsunami or earthquake that could bring complete annihilation to their country. If your country's people had lived like that for thousands of years, you too would see the spiritualism in nature and life. In Shintoism, there are gods of rivers, mountains, rocks, people, animals, all sorts. And there is a god of money. We too can worship the god of money. Give thanks to the money you have in your pocket, whether it is one pound or one dollar or fifty. Whatever the amount, whenever you receive any money, give thanks. Even if money comes from welfare, always appreciate it. It is like those cats in the windows of Chinese shops with the paw that goes up and down. They are designed to encourage good fortune and business, and hence money. Give thanks to money when it comes. Dreaming of money. How can you dream of money? It is simple. Here's an experiment. Before you go to bed at night, watch the most glorious, gruesome, violent movie you can find. Perhaps watch all of the Saw movies, or some violent zombie movies. They're horrendous, and I guarantee your sleep will be full of violent, disturbing dreams with gory imagery. Now, there is no need for you to test this unless you really want to. But the lesson is that the last thing you have in your mind before you sleep will pervade your dreams, and hence your subconscious mind. So instead of watching zombie movies, try reading about something related to money or wealth last thing at night. Perhaps the book, The Millionaire Next Door, or a Dave Ramsey book about money. Perhaps even give a prayer to the God of money, or even better, visualize your ideal life as you fall asleep. It will burrow its way into your conscious mind, gradually imprinting a new mindset of money, of wealth, and a connection towards money. Audit your spending. Make a record of your expenses in a small notebook for a couple of weeks. This is not just about budgeting. It is about recording your expenditure and taking note of the flow of money going into and out of your life. This makes you look more critically at the value of goods. The problem with paying for everything on card is that you lose that connection with money. You don't notice what you are spending. So get used to carrying cash and spending it again. Japan is one of the most technologically advanced nations in the world. This country even has electronic toilets and vending machines that actually scan your body and makes drinks recommendations based on your body type. However, Japan is a paper money society. People still use paper money and rarely use credit cards. They have kept their connection with money, and by doing so, they have a better understanding and relationship with it. Cheap is false economy. Avoid cheap anything. It is bad value. Cheap things break quicker. They wear out quicker. Whether it is electronics or clothes, it does not last as long. Cheap stuff also carries with it cheap energy. If you don't have the money to buy high quality brand goods, you can still buy good quality items 
second hand. Look carefully and find the right things. If it is possible, aim to buy a few good quality items, brand new, and look after them well. By doing so, they can last you many years longer than cheap items. Food. Avoid processed or frozen foods. Eat the best foods you can afford or budget for. Cook, boil and make highly nutritious yet inexpensive meals full of health maintaining vitamins and minerals. Stews are an easy way of doing this. Eat more healthily because far more important than money is your health. Avoid the junk. Junk food is expensive. It makes you unhealthy. It makes your mind foggy. You can't think clearly and you miss opportunities to make money. Be an athlete. Athletes fuel themselves with quality nutrition so they can function at their peak optimum. You want to be healthy to enjoy the money that is coming to you. Rich people care about their health. All the most famous people are in good health and care about what they eat, except for those that give in to their desires. Desire. Temper your desires. Temper your addictions. Even if you have an insanely high income, if you have excessive desires or addictions, you will become poor. A good example is Michael Jackson. He was the richest, most famous person on the planet. The god of money favoured him for a long time. Unfortunately, he was a shopaholic. In one documentary, we see him shopping in an expensive store full of gaudy kitsch objects of art at obscene prices. He bought half the shop and it was all trash. None of it would bring him happiness. When Michael Jackson died, he was about $400 million in debt. Yet isn't that what some of us do? We go shopping to make us feel better, to escape problems. Michael Jackson had a spending problem. It was a way to escape deeper problems in his life. Addiction. That is what addiction is, a way of escaping. The problem is that addictions are nearly always expensive and cost you a lot of money. Gambling, cigarettes, alcohol and sex, all costs. Even addiction to money sucks your soul and life energy away. Look at some finance workers. They have insane amounts of money to buy sports cars, brand clothing, cocaine. Yet all it does is cover the unhappiness, emptiness and stress they have to live with in their lives. The problem is that addiction sucks away your precious energy. It takes you over. It possesses you like a bad spirit. This goes back to the concept of a god of money. If we do not respect the god of money, it can become like a demon and possess us. Temper and control your addictions. At the heart of addiction is desire. Addictions are just misdirected desires. You desire something but you can't get it. So you escape by misdirecting your attention onto something else. The answer to this is to calm your mind. How do you do that? In the book, A Folk Novel of China, the author Eva Wong wrote, Craving or desires are the cause of ill health. Specifically, these are desire for liquor, sexual desire, greed for riches and bad temper. To eradicate the four desires, we must cultivate the heart. Meditation. You temper and eradicate your desires by meditating on the heart energy of the body. This does not mean the heart organ, but the heart energy center or the heart chakra. Many successful people make meditation a part of their daily life. Meditate on the heart chakra for 20 minutes each day. By doing so, you temper your mind and temper your desires, and over time, the power of addictions will grow less. The heart chakra is in an area in the middle of the chest, right between your breast area. Sit quietly and close your eyes. Take some deep breaths and watch your body internally. As you relax, notice the thoughts passing through your mind and send all of those thoughts 
into your heart center. Let them get swallowed up. The heart energy is the emperor of the body. If you empower the emperor, it will calm the whole body and temper your desires. All of these steps and attitudes will change your relationship to money. It will take away the desperation for money. It will remove the tension. As your relationship to money improves, so too will the flow of it towards you, helping you to attract more of it. If you would like to learn more about Genki Health, look into this book, The Genki Self Health Guide. Improve your body and mind with traditional oriental medicine.